it's a pleasant good afternoon and a hat to welcome to News R. In this edition, police in Kano investigates clash between new initiates of a secret society and cattle rearers in Makongo village. Ministry of Information inspects the facilities that will host the commissions of inquiry. Niminko and Nimeyama chief dams and the Wongo Investment Mining Company in Kano district sign a community development agreement. And East End Lions defeats mighty Blackpool one goal to nil. This stories and more are lined up in this edition of News R with me, Alice Mayama Thompson. Welcome back and the first in the news this afternoon, the Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, Solomon Jabu, and the Director General of the Serian Broadcasting Corporation, Joseph Kapoor, have inspected the special court's premise ahead of the opening of the commissions of inquiry. The inspection was to see how best the state broadcaster will show live broadcast of the airings during the inquiry. The long-awaited commissions of inquiry, which will look into the governance activities of the former ABC-led government of Anis Baikoma, is expected to start at the former special court on Tuesday, 29 January 2019. According to the Director General of the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation, Joseph Kapua, the SLBC will take the lead in broadcasting the process. We now bring you highlights of the inspection. Police at Kumbayanda town in Lake Chief Domkano district are investigating a clash between alleged new initiates of what is called Poro Society and cattle rearers in Makongo village. According to reports, the clash started as a result of a missing cow and the forceful entering into the Poro Society bush by some cattle rearers. Houses were burnt down, cows stolen and property worth millions of leons missing. Our correspondent in Kono, Daura Kamara, visited the scene and filed in this report. According to a cattle rear at Makongo Ware Kadiatu Jalo, she was physically assaulted by some members of the Poro Society when the Ware was attacked. Her jewelry and property worth millions of leons went missing while they were running for their lives. Another cattle rear, Alumuba, informed SLBC that one of the older cows got missing during their search. They were prevented from entering a particular area in the bush. Mr. Bass stated that they are aware of the Poro Society and mindful of the culture of the people but stated that the incident happened outside the Poro bush where the cow was slaughtered. He pointed out that seven houses were burnt down and all the cows at the Ware were stolen. They are appealing to governments and humanitarian organizations to provide them with food, shelter and clothing. The town chief of Makongo town, Chief Komba Amadu, said before the commencement of the Poro Society, there was an agreement between local authorities and cattle owners to keep away from certain areas in the forest and control their cattle. Chief Amadu said he was never informed about a missing cow and denied the allegations that they now initiate in Aware. Some initiates were assaulted by some cattle rearers who accidentally entered their society bush. He is calling on government and key stakeholders to settle the impasse in the chiefdom. Lei chiefdom is one of the deprived chiefdoms in Kono districts that needs humanitarian assistance.
The Deputy Director in the Ministry of Social Welfare, Gender and Children's Affairs East, Alice Jennifer Bakoma, has called on parents in Kenema District to take full responsibility to protect their children in the interest of national development. She made this call during a one-day refresher training of key stakeholders and community child protection volunteers in Kenema District by community-based organization Future Focus Foundation. She called on participants to be ambassadors for Future Focus Foundation for the protection of their children in various communities. Giving an overview of the organization, the team leader, Future Focus Foundation Sierra Leone, Sylvester C. D. Calon said they are implementing Goals Education and Empowerment Project titled Empowering Teenage Mothers with Skills Training for Sustainable Livelihood in Kenema District with support from Child Hope UK. Future Focus Foundation is a local community-based organization that started operating in Kenema since 2008 to bring hope to young people in the district. The National Commission for Democracy, NCD Northwest, has distributed civic education materials and flagpoles to St. Joseph Secondary School in McKinney. The nationwide distribution by the Commission is to revive and bring back the aspect of nationalism in schools. From McKinney, Daniel Yusuf Tarali reports. Address at the school compound and as by Kuma Wood McKinney, the Commissioner NCD North by Conte said the concept of civic education seems relatively a new body of knowledge, particularly when it was removed from the school curriculum in the late 70s. He pointed out that since then the country has witnessed a one party system that led to the decadence of the state not being able to deliver basic social services to its citizens, which he described was the root cause of the decade old civil war. He maintained that 18 years on, critical challenges still remain, and that include enhancing citizens' voices in democratic processes building strong foundations for peace consolidation, political intolerance, electoral violence, freedom of expression, among others. Society today do not allow mismatch in information and frowns at those who keep information from those who ought to have short information. So our coming here the second time is to continue in that step, to continue in building a relationship between the commission and between St. Joseph Secondary School in McKinney and by extension all secondary schools in this country. A representative from the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Schools in Bombali by Sheka Wui said selecting St. Joseph Secondary School among other schools was not a mistake as the school has a good record of maintenance and has been making outstanding performance in public exams. Receiving the materials, the principals and Joseph Senior Secondary School, Cecilia Barry, thanked NCD for the gesture, describing it as timely. She said, in her 15 years of service, this is the first time the school has received a donation of short nature from government officials. On behalf of the school, she pledged they will take good care and use the materials for the intended purpose. Daniel Yusuf Trawali, Regional News. Sand mining in many parts of the country has become a major source of income for many youths in Maburka in the Tsankalili district. The trade continues to serve as a source of livelihood to many in that part of the country. Abdul Karim Kanu has the story. Sand mining at the Rokel River in Maburka in the Tsankalili district has today become one of the few economic activities where youths in these parts of the country can busy themselves on a daily basis to generate money and make ends meet. According to some sand miners who spoke to SLBC News, the business of mining sand is what many young people who are either uneducated or jobless depend on as a major source of making money. On a daily basis, those who depend on the trade will go down to the river to remove the sand to the upland where huge piles of sand are built before customers are invited to negotiate the cost. The amount realized from the sales is often used to provide food for family members and take care of other financial obligations. Some of the young men told me they sometimes fall ill during the process but find it difficult to quit the trade because they have no other source of getting money. They appeal for the provision of tools, if not job, to help them do an effective sand mining activity to supply the growing market's demand. Though the process of bringing the sand to the shores 
appears very involving and require huge efforts, but the trade has continued to usher in benefits for many jobless youths in this part of the country. The increasing number of young people turning up to mine sand at the Rokel River in Maboroka clearly indicates the demand for job opportunities for young people in this part of the country. In an effort to develop a highly motivated and skilled entrepreneur, Cardit Sierra Leone is conducting a six-month training for 12 business owners. According to Cardit Sierra Leone, the project is part of its Resilience Business Development Services under its private sector development program to promote and improve businesses in the country. Darren Barry reports. The training of small and medium entrepreneurs is coming at a time when the country is striving to promote its local content policy by ensuring people appreciate made in salon products. Due to challenges faced by entrepreneurs in expanding their businesses and gaining access to loan facilities, the six-month training is geared towards improving on the business growth of entrepreneurs. The 23 billion loans investments by Cordid to the private sector is a show of their commitment to build a thriving and sustainable private sector in the country. It is expected that the training of entrepreneurs will not only boom the country's economy, but also create job opportunities for young people, which have been an ongoing public cry. The private sector development manager, Corded Sierra Leone, Mohamed Wui, said Corded Sierra Leone has been giving support to the private sector, strengthening the health system and financing security and justice programs. Mr. Wui said that since the introduction of the project, they have trained about 60 business owners who have become successful entrepreneurs. He said that within the next six months, entrepreneurs will be trained on business coaching, peer-to-peer -peer learning, ecosystem event, and technical advisory. Mr. Wu noted that Cod Aid's $23 billion investment has also helped boost the agriculture sector and renewable energy through training and financial support. Our current focus in Sierra Leone includes our private sector development, under which we provide our RBDS program and financial inclusion project, which will begin this year uh, in partnership with Comic Relief. Our investment wing, and Corded Investment, which provides access to um, finance for SMEs. Our resilience project in urban communities working along Freetown City Council. Our resilience project also works with other rural communities um, in Makeni and uh, through local partners. One of the trainees of Corded Resilient Business Development, proprietor King Tom Bikri Abdul Rahim Conte, commended Cord Aid for the transfer of knowledge and skills. He said that having gone through the six month training, it can now save and boost off a well structured business. He appealed to the new trainees to be focused and determined if they should become successful and be ready for investments. Corded Sierra Leone is a Dutch Catholic organization that was established in 2000. Nimikoro and Chiefdoms and the Wongo Investment Mining Company in Kono District have signed a community development agreement. The agreement is a document that defines the terms and conditions for the operation of the company in the two chiefdoms. The signing was witnessed by the National Minerals Agency at the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources Regional Office in Kono District. Maya Masumo reports. The objective of this community development agreement is to provide a framework for the implementation of the operator's community development obligations in accordance with the Mines and Minerals Act 2009. This community development agreement will also serve as a document that defines the terms and conditions that the company will operate on and also the responsibilities of the people in those communities. Community Affairs and Public Relations Officer, National Mineral Agency, Henry Kamara, said pursuant to Section 139 of the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009, the operator is required to assist in promoting sustainable development in communities they operate. He noted that the priority of President Bill's New Direction agenda is that all mining companies operating in Diamond Landscape District must enhance the general welfare and quality of life of the communities directly affected. Both Today is a very important ceremony between the, the Chiefdom, of Nimiyama Chiefdom, 
the Wikorochi Dome and the Wonko Mining and Investment Corporation, which has an intention to come and mine in Nimiyama and Nimikoro. Uh, so, government regulation uh, is saying as per requirement for them to have a mining license, they should have one community consent, two, they should have a community development agreement between the company and the primary host community. And for Hong Kong mining, the primary host community is Nimikoro Chibdom and the Nimiyama Chibdom. So we've been in a process for, for a couple of months to arrange the community development agreement between them. As you know that it is by law that all large-scale mining companies should enter and implement the community development agreement according to section 139 of the Mines and Minerals Act of 2009. Both representatives of the Community Development Agreement Committee of Nemikoro and Nemiyama Chiefdoms thank the government and the National Mineral Agency for their efforts in ensuring that they are included in the agreement which has never happened in the district. Chiefdom Speaker and Chairman Community Development Agreement Committee, Mimiyama Chiefdom, Philip Kuruma, said documents will ensure commitment of both the company and the communities. In the document, they started telling us about, uh, about uh, projects that they will implement before they, 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 they start their operations. That is what has even induced us to sign their document. And the Nimiya Machibdom, the road project will be our priority because uh, the communities that are affected by the, by the company, there are no roads there. So our first priority will be to make a very good roads leading to those villages. Chairman, Kono District Council, Solomon Gondo, said operators and the district council have the responsibility to foster the involvement of the affected communities in negotiations and implementation of the community development agreement. He advised the community people to always channel their complaints through the committee and not to take the laws into their hands. Responding, the Chief Executive Officer of the Wongo Investment and Mining Company, Hilton Boli, informed the Guardian that he is not only the CEO of the company, but also a son of the soil. He said they will follow all the rules in the agreement and promise to work with the committee members in ensuring that the right thing is done in bringing development in those chiefdoms. Both the communities, the government and us, are working with one thing in mind. That is, the president, President Bio, set the pace. He set the law, and he said clearly that any mining company in any community has to meet certain criteria. And primary of this criteria is development of the local communities. And so it's been our responsibility to make sure we have a mutual and comfortable relationship with the community. With this agreement, the people of these two chiefdoms are optimistic that development will find its way to their doorstep as they can't boost of any significant development the mineral has brought to the district. For SLBC News, Maya Masuma reporting. The National Football Premier League has recommenced after almost four years since it was abruptly stopped due to wrangling with the football family in the country. Thousands of Sierra Leoneans, including President Bio and First Lady Fatima Bio, were at the Shaker Stevens Stadium to witness the first match between city rivals Mighty Blackpool and Eastern Lions. Wearing Eastern Lions defeated Mighty Blackpool one goal to nil. President Bio, who did the kickoff, said during his tenure, football will be taken to a higher level. He said violence must be avoided throughout the league and that love and peace should prevail with nationalism being the watchword. Well, in the studios to talk more about security issues, I have in the studios Al Haji Komba, Communications Director of the Premier League Board. Good afternoon and welcome to News R. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Now, in a whole, how would you rate this? Do you think it was a success? It was a huge success yesterday. And as a matter of fact, as a people, we demonstrated our patriotic responsibility by awakening the sense of pride and ownership of our country's football. 
And it clearly shows people have been anticipating for this moment to get a rebirth of the league. Thanks to President Bill and the people of Sierra Leone. Because everybody was on board. Yeah. As a fan, you had a role to play. Yeah. As a technical person, you had a role to play. But even though just over 35,000 people converged at the Shaka Stevens Stadium yesterday, every other geographical location that makes up Sierra Leone were part of the process yesterday. Okay. Thanks to SLBC again and other uh, stations that gave live commentaries for people that we are not in Freetown to be part of the process. Okay, we, we, we saw that, uh, you know, later years before the, the, the you know, before uh, football was suspended in the country, people were not this eager, people were not this supportive. Now you see people, even women who are, who are not so, you know, involved in sporting activities, were there, were, here, were there yesterday, you know, putting on their jerseys and supporting. What, what was the strategy that you guys used to bring this out? Yes, and it, it, it has to do with Sierra Leone, yeah. The, the, the whole situation is like a, a swift response to this and hue and cry before this time that as a nation we need to go back to the drawing board, especially when before now we've been participating in international competition without any good outcome. And backed by the acrimony that surrounded the game before this time, people have been saying let's go back to the drawing board. So with FIFA suspending Sierra Leone, we think it's an opportunity for us to now come to the drawing board by restructuring every sector that makes up football governance in Sierra Leone. So we see it as a kind of reform or transformation. This whole thing started with a, a system of creating standards as basic criteria for the clubs to meet. And the process, the board, the media, the clubs, we are all engaged in the marketing and publicity of the, and the league. And we had to instill into people that Eastern Lions, Mighty Black, FC Calon, and all other participating clubs are Sierra Leonean clubs. You must be directly or indirectly affiliated with it, either by relation or coming from a community that the club belongs to, or a district or the region. But above all, it has to do with the passion and the, 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 the patriotism okay. we do demonstrate. So you think it was the love that was being demonstrated, or was it, was it just a kickback at FIFA saying we're going to play football no matter what you say? Okay, this is the perception. Yeah, it's not like a contest between Sierra Leone and FIFA. No, as a matter of fact, Premier League plays in Sierra Leone, and it's the responsibility of Sierra Leone as a nation to organize Premier League. Yeah, uh, what I can say is we 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 missed our focus before this time, concentrating on. FIFA dictates. So we, we realized ourselves to say, no, let's come back. We are just an affiliate to FIFA, wherein we participate in FIFA competitions. But for a better participation, you have to embark on a solid foundation back home. And the solid foundation has to do with organizing a solid Premier League, especially when it has to do with the pinnacle of club football, yeah, the highest stage. We are in from this stage, you have players that will be representing the different cadres of the national team. You have clubs that will be representing in the CAF Champions League or African Club uh, Confederations uh, and Championship, which are continental championship. Yeah. So you see the significance of why we need to organize this league. And secondly, we see it as a platform yeah, to have government on board with their youth employment drive scheme to also target the, and the, the, the footballers as a set of public that should benefit from such drive. We are now talking of over 430 players directly registered under the, 30, uh, the, the, the teams that are participating with fewer teams of another 430 players. So we are actually targeting about four, uh, 800 players and over 84 referees that will be officiating each match of 162 matches okay. with incentive at the end of the day. So you see the job creation drive mm. that the Premier League board has created and government indeed took advantage of the situation by responding swiftly to the cry of Sierra Leoneans. Okay. And it was clearly demonstrated at I the Amidst all Stadium. that we saw yesterday, you know, the euphoria and all the exuberance that was, ex you know, experienced yesterday, there were challenges. People were saying, uh, you know, you, you, you oversold tickets yesterday. 
that the stadium was packed to capacity. I think you didn't take into consideration that the st stadium, you know, there have been issues of the stadium being, you know, not too strong. Did you take that into, you know, into consideration before selling tickets at that capacity? Okay. On behalf of the board, we accept and take responsibility. However, organizing such match, the ticket issue and other activities have been mined by the hosting club. And the hosting club for yesterday's match was Mighty Blackpool. They sold the tickets out. Yeah, but it's just part of the challenges we will possibly meet along the line. And as a board and clubs, we'll continue to and tackle those challenges by learning from, from our mistakes. Honestly, people underrated the situation and the, 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 the pace at which the whole atmosphere So you were not was. expecting that? No, we were. We were. We were. But you were I mean not the prepared clubs. for it. Yeah, I mean the club. We were well prepared. Because there was only one toilet, according to reports reaching us, there was only one toilet facility open for both male and female. Well, it's not true. Except if you want to tell us the entire Shaka Stevens Stadium is having one Well, toilet. according to reports, that's what we were told. Well, it's not true. Even at the, the, the presidential stand, yeah, okay. where I was, there, you have toilet downstairs, when you go upstairs again, you have another set of toilets. And there were there. people on the track, you know, that was close to the march where people were watching. Okay. We have the media who plays pivotal role in ensuring the effectiveness and efficiency more of it in the area of publicizing the match. Yeah. You cannot tell us the TV stations, for example, should not be on. We are not saying on the track, but just be on the track. Yeah. You have also match officials that are there. What I can confirm and accept to, yeah, the overpopulation forced us to have some people mm. downstairs as a way of managing the overcrowding. So that yeah. Was, that was yeah, yes, that, that's a challenge. I will accept to that. So yeah. how are you going to put those in place for the next game? What we learned from the past, uh, uh, from the past, you, you know, because reviving the game that has been done for over four years has to meet some uh, daunting task. Yeah. And we we'll learn from the past, as I say, with the next pictures in Bo, we are boring just will be hosting FC Calum on Friday. Thing? On, on right. Friday, yes, and the same Friday in Kenema, can we eagle to be hosting and Diamond Stars of Tono? We we'll try to make sure we we'll put modalities in place with the security sector, with the media publicity, ticket arrangement, so that we we'll don't have an overcrowding that will disturb. Are you, expecting, are you expecting a, a jam-packed stadium in Bull? Oh, yes. All the venues, we are expecting a jam-packed... And that's a lot of money in your coffers, right? Interestingly, we, we promised the government that's a job creation drive. 80% of proceeds from the gate goes back to the club to empower them more, to upkeep the activities of the club in terms of paying salaries to the players and also officials of those clubs. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Well, he is the, the communications director of the Premier League board, Alhaji Kumba. Well, this is News reaching you live from the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. The Shaka Stevens Stadium is the biggest in Sierra Leone and mostly hosts big events including inaugurations, religious crusades, musical extravaganzas and the international marches that brings thousands of people together. But for more than a decade now, poor toilet facilities has been one of the major challenges that citizens are complaining about. SLV's Cynthia Kamara takes a look at the story. Stadium, commonly known as the Siaka Stevens Stadium, sits majestically at the western part of Freetown, Brookfield to be precise. It was built in 1979 by the Chinese and named after former president Siaka Stevens. The stadium houses facilities for major sporting disciplines like track and field events, football, swimming, karate halls, basketball and volleyball courts, and table tennis rooms are also built there to name a few. It also boasts of a hostel and other administrative outlets in its vicinity. The national stadium can host 36,000 spectators to any given program at its main ball. The stadium is occasionally used as a venue for social, cultural, religious, and public events, including the inauguration of newly elected president of the nation. But over the years, the general public has been concerned about the deterioration of the facilities such as inadequate water and poor toilet facilities. 
The issue has come to be more prominent now, as the nation is expected to descend on the national stadium with a kickstart of the Premier League. Due to this poor state of toilet facilities, visitors to the national stadium are most times seen or forced to ease themselves on gutters, while others are greeted with uncomfortable bad odors. The general manager National Stadium, Paul Damuli Jr., told SLBC that meeting the newly appointed Minister of Sport some weeks ago, blames were hyped on bad boys that attend programs at the stadium who misuse the facility. I am presently working closely with the Chinese to ensure that the stadium is in good order. Our first priority is the strengthening or reinforcement of the National Stadium Main Bowl, which has already been done, as the general public was complaining about its weakness. Our second target is to fix in new lighting systems all over the National Stadium. After all this is done, we can ensure to install adequate toilet facilities, which are presently on the high seas to Sarion. The general manager of the National Stadium, however, assured Sierra Unions that they will put modalities in place to ensure that the toilets are cleaned up and in good order before the start of the Premier League. Cynthia Kamara reporting for SLBC News. Students from the Mass Communications Department of the University of McKinney, Unimark, and the University of San Pablo from Spain have made a familiarization visit to the Sterling Broadcasting Corporation facilities at New Englandville. The visit was to learn more about the operations of the SLBC. Iona Patrick Hamar was with the team. SLBC receives every time students from various institutions of learning whose interest is to know about the operations of the corporation. As the University of McKinney Unimac joins the University of Sierra Leone to produce mass communicators, having hands on experience is part of the learning process. According to the acting director of Human Resource and head of television, SLBC, Reverend Lucian Ganda, who took the team on the conducted tour, said SLBC was established by an act of parliament in 2010 when it merged with the UN radio. We have been working at the corporation, taking the lead in broadcast journalism in Sierra Leone, and we have been offering our services to the nation. We have several branches. It is not only this one. We have several branches across the country. We have a radio station established in Tainau, in the eastern part of Sierra Leone. We have a radio and television established in Kenema, in the eastern part of Sierra Leone. We have a radio station established in Komoa, in the eastern part of Sierra Leone. We have a radio and television established in Makini, in the northern province of Sierra Leone. We also have a radio station at Boca, very close to Makini, by Boca. And we also have a radio and TV station established in Bo, in southern Sierra Leone. The director of marketing SLBC, Fatima Kuruma, said their primary responsibility is to generate funds for the institution. She said with what they were generating over the years, they are expecting an increase of revenue as their main source is through co-location fees paid by users of SLBC's facilities at Leicester Peak. Director of Engineering SLBC, Al Aji Bangura, said even though they are constrained with equipment, they are doing their best to ensure the institution gives its best to the public. Head of Department, Mass Communications Department, University of McKinney, Matthew Kanu, and the team leader of the team from Spain, Professor Elena C. Bryan, commended SLBC for educating the public about happenings in the country. One of the leading media institutions across the country. And uh, we also want our partners from the University of San Pablo, Spain, by Spain, to also uh, come and see what serial media is like and uh, get a way forward for uh, better journalism, country, and the journalism that will 
basically interest of the people. So we are in this collaboration, we are in this partnership. It's all about building Sierra Leone. This is an opportunity to know how Sierra Leone media are working, uh, to get to know how the journalism uh, understood that the service to society. You are doing a uh, good work uh, in uh, different conditions that, uh, and different scenarios that we have here in, in Spain. The team visited various departments of the corporation, learning new things and seeing the place where the news is produced for the consumption of the public. SLVC is mourning a former employee of the corporation, Josephus Ulumama. The late man worked for SLBC just after its creation in 2010. Until his death, he worked for FTN Television but passed away on Sunday after a short illness at the Connors Hospital in Freetown. So Iba Samoa has the story. The former employee first came to the corporation when he made a jingle on the transformation of the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Service to a corporation under the Director General, Dr. Ajibola Thomas. Hello, my brother. You came in and said, yes, I like you. I like your program. I like what you're doing. It's also good entertainment. And I like the, the, the SLBC. And I've done something. I'm an editor. I've done a lot of editing. You know, I've done video clips as well. And I did something for SLBC. I don't know if you can introduce me or rather play that. It's free for you. And I said, wow. I said, well, I would like to see what you've done. And then I said, come to SLBC. And then I will introduce you to our director because we are really looking for uh, an editor. Came to SLBC the next day and with a CD plate. And then I, I told him, wait downstairs. And then I came up with the CD and then played it. I saw what he did. You know, it was nice with the SLBC, the logo, state house, all those things. You know, he did that without even informing anybody. Just the passion for SLBC. And the jingle he put together gained momentum as it was played on the national television all throughout while he served as head of the digital department of the SLBC before he left for another television station. I think a lot of people that will uh, give tribute about Kulumama will say that he's a very humble person, he doesn't complain, they will take anything to him, any job to him uh, for editing and they will just say okay come back in such a time or come on let's do it now. You know, he was very hard working. We'll always come and ask you what you're working on and since he was the head of the uh, digital editors you know he always tried to ensure that editors were there to edit our news as reporter when we come with it. He introduced the job of audiovisual and linear editing to me and he was that friendly and he's up to the task at any given point whenever you call on him He's ready and willing to work. He spends most of his time doing research and you, you explore together with him. So is that kind of boss that worth to be acknowledged? So when it's time to work, you work together. You put aside every play habit. And when it's time to play, we do play also. I missed him so much. He was also a close workmate to the current acting head of human resource at the SLBC, Lucian Ganda. In fact, he was the brain behind our transformation. Because when I came to SLBS, we were using the, the typical analog system, that is um, the, even the cameras, we are using those big tips. So when Joseph Ulumama came, that was the time our cameras, we started changing and reviewing our broadcast, and we are using the digital cameras now with the car. So the of the mama was the person who led this institution to that process. He came in and then they bought some softwares and they started doing editing on the computer because by then our editing system was quite different from what now obtains. So Ulumama was part of that and uh, I decided to go close to him because I wanted to grow. At that time I was just a reporter. So I was close to Joseph in order for him to teach me because I wanted to go in broadcasting to know about editing. If I can edit today, what you met me doing now is editing. 
it was because of the first Ulumama. Asmi Uba had known Ulumama from childhood as both of them grew up together in the same community in Kisi and as adults they worked in the same office, the SLBC. Both of us grew up in the same community. Um, we went to school together. After school we played football in the same community together. So it was very pleasing um, when we met here again as adults at the Serum Broadcasting Corporation. Well, met me here and I had always held him as a brother as a friend because he was a fine gentleman since I had known him as a child and since we met at the SLBC where we worked as adults. He was dedicated, very courageous. Um, he knew what he was doing. He was a very committed worker, someone who never brought play to his job. Whatever he wanted to do, he did it as his best. And whatever was given to him, whatever task was given to him, he carried it out with all his best. I would definitely miss Ulumama. The late Josephus will be missed by not only SLBC, but other broadcasting institutions in the country, including the Freetown Television Network, FTN, where he worked until his death, and AYV. He was a dedicated worker who gave his best to his work. May his soul rest in peace. Soriba Samura, Freetown. The Lavers Broadcasting Network has celebrated three years of amplifying voices through their project SALT. SALT, SALT, which stands for Strength, Amplify, Listen and Transformation, focuses on seven communities in the Western area. Cynthia Kamara filed in this report. The event facilitated deepened relationship with trust in communities and gives support to post-Ebola recovery by promoting health and well-being of these people. Chief Executive Officer Believers Broadcasting Network Rants for Rights said they have been working with group of volunteers from clinics and churches in seven communities and they regularly meet with people in their homes and communities to listen and appreciate their concerns hopes and strength. The communities they work in are Smiler Town, Duazak, New England, Bookfields, Red Pump, Greybush and Motome. The project he went on also addresses teenage pregnancies. We have witnessed tangible, measurable and material changes including pipe on water, feeder roads construction and community centre construction. Some intangible changes, though significant, have been improved dialogue between stakeholders, stronger participation in community projects, and improved social capital of the community volunteers we work with. We're amplifying the stories from these communities. One of the sponsors, Health Communication Resources, UK Stephanie Money, said they will be taking the project to other countries because they are impressed with the work BBN has been doing the past three years. So there was something within this particular radio station of how it wanted to engage with its communities, the fact it was really trying to provide outreach. And so they had, they've got a particular uh, set of skills, but that for us has brought... Um, brought so much actually um, in terms of from processes we've seen in other parts of the world Sierra Leone has been unique it's gone faster and it's gone deeper um, than we've seen in other countries so we are looking to replicate what we're learning in Sierra Leone to take it um, into other countries. The project which was evaluated last year is also building skills for the volunteers and the communities are meeting regularly to discuss important issues. The communities are also supporting themselves with small loan scheme and in the Motome community, they are planting trees to prevent mudslide and protecting their communities. Since they come reporting for SLBC News. Reports from Burkina Faso say gunmen in the north of the country have killed at least 10 people in a village close to the border with Mali.
during the attack on Sikure near the town of Abinda, shops and other businesses were looted and set alight. Islamist militants have carried out a wave of killings across the region in recent years. The defense and security ministers of Burkina Faso were sacked as part of a government reshuffle earlier this month following a previous attack in the north of the country. Cameroon's president Azali Asumani has denied targeting his opponents in the run-up to elections. He said the detention of opposition members was an unfortunate coincidence. Several opposition politicians have been tried and convicted recently. Ex-President Ahmed Abdallah Sambi is under house arrest for fraud and corruption. President Mohamed Buhari replaced Chief Justice Walter Onogen on Friday. He is facing charges for allegedly failing to declare his personal assets before taking office in 2017, which he denies. And now for entertainment news. Sierra Leone's female gospel singer, Sister Melis Kamar, will be celebrating her one-year anniversary in the field of proper mu gospel music. Our entertainment producer went through her life as a gospel artist and compiled this report, read in the studios by Melissa Ntlunga. We bow before your throne in adoration. You are God. The happiest moment for celebrities is when they celebrate their golden or silver jubilee in their God-given field. This act is to prove joy and commitment over their professions. In Sierra Leone, few celebrities celebrate their talents, and one such star is a female gospel singer, Sister Melus Kamara, who started singing praise and worship songs in church at an early age. Sister Melrose will be celebrating her one year anniversary in the field of proper gospel music at the Jehovah Nisi Living Word of Faith Ministries at Jalo Terrace in at the eastern part of Freetown. Sister Melrose grew up in McKinney where she did her primary schooling at the St. Francis Primary School and further at St. Joseph Convent Secondary School in McKinney. According to her, she came from a Muslim family and later converted to Christianity. In school, she was encouraged by her pastor, Sunduke, to join the school choir called Gospel Messengers. The group went singing from school to school in Makini and this gave her the urge to change religion. In 2009, Sister Mary was left for Gambia after the war and started her music career proper. And there again, she met her singing mentor, Pastor Forbes, who motivated her to become a proper gospel musician. In the Gambia, she recorded four of her songs and two in Freetown at the Sanctuary Priest Church in Brookfields. She recorded six songs in her album titled, Jesus Reigns. This album was launched last year and now she is about to celebrate one year of its release at the Jehovah Nissan Living World Ministries on Sunday the 27th of January and it will be a live performance. She will be collaborating with another gospel singer, president of the gospel musicians, Sister Blessed, as the church will be having its African Sunday and musical youth performance. Sister Mary Rose says she is not only singing for Christians but also for non-Christians as she believes her songs can win souls. She called for support from her fans and all churches to continue their support towards her as her aim is to take civilian gospel music to a higher height. And now, with the heat surrounding the Serlin Premier League, let's go over to sports. It's a heart welcome to sports updates in this edition. The 2019 CLN Premier League has commenced under the supervision of Emmanuel Safa Abdullahi as chairman of the Premier League board, with the government supporting the league with two billion loans. East and Lions, the Killers, defeated Mighty Blackpool by a goal to nil. The only goal was scored by Alassane Koma. 
His, Excell His Excellency, the President, it's uh, Brigadier Julius Madabio said he promised during his campaign that he will exert football in the country and he has done so. He now calls on the youth especially to embrace the development and stay away from violence. We now bring you highlights of the match. Sports journalist Ibrahim Bangla of Eagle FM 91.3, who died at the Connaught Hospital in Freetown mid January, will be buried on Tuesday coming. His sudden death came as a surprise to many football fans and administrators in the country. A SBC Sport Desk takes a look at his demise. Life of the dead is placed in the memory of the living, regardless of race, religion, geographical area, or time. Every human has wondered about the one fact of life that unifies all of us. Despite a person's particular belief, the fact, according to some school of thought, remains that death is the end of life. The demise of Ibrahim Bangura has been viewed by many as a huge shock to the sports sector because he is a well-known personality for consistency in analyzing the various spheres of sporting disciplines in the country. When a co-worker experiences the death of another colleague, the feeling is that no amount of words will help that individual deal with the situation. That the state of Ba Ali Sisse, executive producer and presenter of Eagle Sports, finds himself. According to him, Ibrahim Bangura will be missed by the Eagle Sports team for his production skills and analytical ability. Ibrahim Bangura was a great loss to us, members of the Eagle Sports team. His contribution towards our sporting program was very, very good. We lost Ibrahim, it was a very big shock to us when we had the news this morning. We shocked because we are not believed that something could have happened. He was a vocal person in the sports scene, he's very, very vital. Whenever I'm absent, he always stepped into my shoes. So the absence of Ibrahim in the sports program is a great loss, and I think um, his replacement, I will not say it's irresponsible, but I think it's very difficult for us to replace Ibrahim from the sports scene. 
The demise of Ibrahim Bangura, according to his elder brother, Lahai Bangura, is a great loss to the Bangura family, noting that the late man has contributed immensely to the educational development of children as well-trained and qualified teacher of the government secondary technical school in Freetown. The death of a loved one is a stressful moment and in the midst of grief, it is an event everyone inevitably encounters. May his soul rest in peace. May he continue to rest in peace. That's all for sports in this edition of News R. I am Esther Maisama. Thanks for watching. And with sports, news hour comes to a close. But before we go, a quick look at the top stories. Police in Kono is investigating a clash between new initiates of a secret society and cattle rearers in Makongo village. Ministry of Information has inspected the facilities that will host the commissions of inquiry. Nimikoro and Nimiyama chiefdoms and the Wongo Investment Mining Company in Kono district have signed a community development agreement. And Eastern Lions has defeated Mighty Black Bull by one goal to nil. Well, that's the end of the news from the Serodium Broadcasting Corporation. I am Alice Mayama Thompson. Thanks for watching. Keep watching the air service.